You're listening to Good Morning Gwinnett, a division of Noise Media Network, hosted by Audrey Bell Kearney, sharing stories about people and places around beautiful Gwinnett County and beyond. Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Southern Living at its best. Good morning, good morning, good morning, all my Gwinnettians out there in Gwinnett land and all my friends around the world. It's a beautiful day here in Gwinnett County, 80 degrees, going up to a high of 84. Listen, the temperatures are dropping. I can't get excited about that, though, because here's what I know for a fact. Today it'll be 80 and tomorrow it'll be 103. Just so. announced, Walmart, Target. Okay, why is, why is Siri talking? It's so crazy. She's talking right in the middle of my thing. That's that AI for you. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful Tuesday morning. Today is Talk Business Tuesday, and I'm talking about how to um, how to actually leverage newsletters to market and 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 and, pr- and promote your products and services. You know, I had someone that asked me a question recently um, about that. So I've been doing I've been in media for a long time, 24 years, and you guys probably have heard me say this a million times, but I've been in media for 24 years. Um, traditional radio, I had, I've been on TV, I had a newspaper, I had magazines. I've been in newsletter for a long time, I mean, business for a long time. The very first thing I ever created as a media person was a newsletter. It was a print newsletter, but it was a newsletter. And, um, I remember, um, starting out, you know, I had this idea for this newsletter. Microsoft, I think had just came out with like Microsoft publisher. So I started to learn how to use it. I've been doing this for a long time. When I, every time I think about how long I've been doing this kind of stuff, it's been a long time. And, um, I started doing the newsletter and, um, and then I learned how to do newspapers. So I was a, I was an editor. I was a the small business editor for a local newspaper and then one of my friends decided he wanted to start a newspaper, and he started one. So when I saw him start one, I'm like, wait a minute. He could start a newspaper? I could start a newspaper. So then I started a newspaper called Women in Business Today. So I've been doing this for a long time. Um, and then I had a show called Women in Business Today on the radio. Then I had a show called Women in Business Today on the TV. So um, I took that newspaper, turned it into a radio show, and then I turned it into a TV show. That's 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 just me. So anyway, I... um. I was thinking about this this morning because one of the things when you first start a newsletter, you don't really have a whole lot of, uh, you don't have followers. And a lot of the times when people, um, think about advertising in your newsletter or sponsoring your newsletter, one of the things they say is, well, how many readers do you have? And how many, you know, how many subscribers do you have? All this kind of stuff. So you may have a small list. Like my newsletter has over 400 people on it and I do, I put it out every day and I'm about to launch my second newsletter now. But I put it out every day. One of the things I do in my newsletter is I market my course that I have coming up. So for those of you who are thinking about starting a business in the media space, whether it be a newsletter, a podcast, a video channel, a digital magazine, um, a blog, um, that may be a course that you want to take. As a matter of fact, if you're dead serious about it, you definitely want to take the course. So go to MainStreetMediaAcademy.biz, MainStreetMediaAcademy.biz. Main Street Media Academy biz. Um, I'm gonna that class is gonna start in October. It's a six weeks course, and I'm gonna be teaching you live, is me in person. You know how to launch these newsletters, how to launch a podcast. You know how to get it on Amazon. How to, all these different things that you wanna. You know you how to get on Amazon Alexa. Um, I'm gonna be talking about that in the class. So in my newsletter, because my my list is still relatively small, I heard that when you get to a thousand, that's when people start to come and say, Hey, let me advertise. And I was like, Oh, and I just found that out recently. I didn't know that. I thought it had to be like 10,000, 15,000. So I was on a mission to get like 15,000. I, I still am on a mission. I want to, I want to go, I want to grow Gwinnett Morning Spark to 1 million subscribers. That's my, that's my dream. Right. And I had to do a, um, I had to do a checkup on the newsletter and I did a little short survey asking people, you know, what did they think of the short form form versus the long form? And, you know, 66% of the people said they like the short form, which is pretty much just the inspirational stuff. So I took out all the other stuff that they obviously don't care about. And it's because the inspirational stuff, according to my stats is what they spend the most time on. So I shortened the newsletter. I made it very concise. Um, It's inspirational. It's a message from in the morning. Then there's a song. Then there's an inspirational article. Then there's a conscious living article because I want people to live their best life. Um, I want them to be healthy. And there's a conscious conscious living article. And then at the bottom is things to do around Gwinnett for the rest of the week. So I shortened the newsletter down tremendously. 
And um, that was important. But in the newsletter, there is a link to my course. There's a link to this podcast, Good Morning Gwinnett. I'm going to throw in a link to um, my books in Amazon so people can buy those. I'm writing a new book right now. Um, so you can put your books and products inside of your newsletter and promote it. Here's what I know for a fact. I know that your newsletter is probably the most powerful thing you have. There was a guy, um, I was in a Reddit, I'm in, I'm in a bunch of Reddit groups, um, and I was in a newsletter Reddit group, and he was saying, you know, he was trying to, he was trying to get more traffic to his newsletter, but he was using his website. And I was saying to him, I said to him, look, I get why you want a, new, a website. I do. But if you're thinking that your website is going to drive traffic to the newsletter, unless you got a lot of traffic going to that website, it probably won't. Having a website, especially if, if it's a blog website, that is a whole science by itself. So I said to him, because the algorithms change, Google changes the algorithms all the time. So even if you have a website for your product, right? And you're thinking, I got my product on the website. Okay, it's on the website. Now what? Like it's on the website and then now what? Right? Because you have to drive traffic to the website so people can know the website is there. With your email newsletter, when you have a list, I don't care if it's a list of about 100 people. If you have a list of 100 people who love you and you're putting out something new, they will purchase from you. But they got to love you. Right. Because I got I got newsletters. Um, I got emails, but I don't I don't promote my products and services in, in that newsletter. It's over four thousand people. I don't really promote anything in there, but I'm going to start promote. I'm going to promote my course in there. And um, but I and I have not done that. I do it in my other newsletter for my um, my Gwinnett Morning Spark newsletter. I don't do it in the GWC newsletter, which I should do it in there. But the website, people think I'm going to put up a website and the traffic is going to come. That's not. That's not how that works, especially if you have a static site. A static site means that you have a site, it has a product on it, it has an about you page, it has a contact page. If that, that's a static site. That means nothing happens on that site except for you have put it there, you have put a link to your product, and that's it, right? I have a news site. Good Morning Gwinnett is a podcast and a news site, which I go there and I post content at least two to three times a week. Like actually write articles and put it there. Like if something is happening around Gwinnett County, I go there, I put it on the news. That site has so much content on it. You would think that I would have a lot of traffic and I'm always making sure like I got the keywords and I got the titles and the link backs and the, and the internal links and all this stuff. And then inside of my platform, I have a thing. I have a piece of software that's in a plugin that's embedded in, in my website and it tells me, okay, what your score right now for your title is 60. I need the score to be into a green. So now I got to go back and rework the title. Just trying to get the titles alone sometimes is a lot of work. So I got the, I got this website that I put a lot of content on and I drive traffic to there by, by organic, by putting out this, all this content. But I could tell you, I probably will make more money. will make more money from my newsletter because these people are getting this in their inboxes. They're reading what I'm saying. I see that they're reading cause I can see the stats. I don't know who's reading the news, the website. I don't know where they're coming from. I don't have an email from, for them. I have none of that stuff. So, you know, even though I, you know, I, I'm, I think everybody should have a website. I really, really do don't have, you know, I got an Instagram page. Okay. And the Instagram shuts your page down. Then what? Now you have nothing. You don't have, you don't have access to the people's name. You don't have their email addresses and you don't have your Instagram account because something you did violated something on Instagram and now you have nothing. So you need a website, but you also need to have a marketing plan. And for me, I, I really wish I had thought about this earlier when I first started doing newsletters and when I first had my first email list and all that. Kind of, I didn't know. So when you don't know, you don't know. But once you know better, you're supposed to do better. Hence is why this information is important. So think about why you want to start a newsletter. Now, what I can tell you, and this is something that I learned, when I thought about starting my newsletter, Gwinnett Morning Spark, it was very simple. It was for me to put out inspirational messages at 6 a.m. in the morning. That was it. Where I screwed up at, and I say this, I screwed up because it was a me thing. The The newsletter was going to be one name, but I decided, you know what? I want to stay on brand. I'm going to call it Gwinnett Morning Spark. And then when I put Gwinnett in there, it threw it all off. It, it didn't resonate. It didn't resonate with me at that moment that that's throwing off with the, the original vision and mission I had for the newsletter, which was to create a newsletter 
that was short enough for people to read at 6 a.m. in the morning and be inspired. That was the original mission and vision, right? A song, an inspiring song, an inspiring quote or something. That was the, and I, I put the word Gwinnett in there and threw the whole thing off. And then I had to, then I started banging my head against the wall because now I got all this work to do. I got to put all this information. So I did the poll yesterday. And my poll came back and 66% of the people say they like the shorter form version. And I took out all of the Gwinnett stuff except for what's happening this week. That's the only thing I left. It took me literally about 45 minutes to do the newsletter versus two and a half hours normally because I got to do so. Don't do that. Make your newsletter concise. Make it, make it, make it share the message you wanted to want to share. If you are not like me and and can handle a weekly schedule, I I mean a a daily schedule, don't do that. Put out a weekly newsletter. I do a daily newsletter. That is a lot of work. I was sick all last week, and you probably can hear it in my voice. I'm still kind of under the weather, but I'm a lot better. One of those days, I felt so horrible, and no one can do my newsletter but me. That was, I told my husband, I said, this is a time I really wish that I had someone to do my newsletter. Oh my, I felt so bad. And I had to drag myself out the bed and do the newsletter. And it was a long newsletter because it has a lot of content in it. And you know, laying there, when you land down, you have to be still and be quiet. You start to ask yourself questions. And I was like, I want to do my people even like the newsletter this long. You know, that was a me thing. I put the word Gwinnett in the, in the title and threw it all off. So, now they say we like 60%, we like the short form, short form, which had nothing in it but a short message from me. The song is next. Click there to listen to the song. That takes you to my YouTube channel. They can listen to the song, watch the video. Then right after that is a a longer, a longer message, insp- inspirational message. And then right after that is a conscious living tip. And then at the bottom is what's happening around Gwinnett this week. It's just a little calendar of dates of what's happening. So when you get ready to do your newsletter, I would even suggest you go as far as creating a newsletter based around the product that you're offering. Now, before you do that, because I don't want you to run out of content, look at what you're offering. If you're offering, I'm offering right now, I'm offering a a course on how to start a podcast, how to start an Amazon Fire TV channel, how to start a newsletter, how to start a news site. This is for the person who wants to be in deep in media like me as a media entrepreneur. That's for that person, right? So if I were to start a newsletter about that, it would be all of the things that pertain to podcasting, Amazon Fire, um, how to start a news a news site on WordPress, you know, how to start a newsletter on Beehive. That's what my newsletter would be about. It would break down certain things. But if they wanted to get the in the person, get me in a live course, that's where the course coming at. So if you're thinking about selling a product with your newsletter, right, make sure that the newsletter, especially if you haven't started yet, I, I did everything wrong with my newsletter, right? I was I was creating a newsletter from the heart, trying to stay on brand, everything totally wrong. I'm, and I'm, I don't say that it's wrong. I, it's just not, it's not, I don't see, I don't, and I could be totally wrong about that. I made some mistakes in the beginning. I don't want you to do that. If you're going to create a newsletter, create it in your space. My newsletter should have been about podcasting and newsletters. That's what it should have been about. And news sites and, and Amazon Fire TV channels and all the stuff that I do in my business. That's not what it was about. It was about Gwinnett County, which is where I live. Hence is this podcast, right? So I was kind of stay on brand. You need to think about what your newsletter is going to be about. If you're going to promote a product, right, if it's a digital product that people have to pay for, um, you can promote it, but don't give away what's inside the product. I'm, and some people say give it away. I'm going to say give away something similar that's inside of the product because if you if you do the newsletter and you give away everything in the pro- inside of the product, why would they purchase the product? You know, and some people will purchase because they really want to, they need more. They need to see the video. They need to see the audio. You know, what you're giving them in the newsletter is the written part part of it. So you, you, you have to think that through for yourself, right? And I give away a lot of free content. But in my course, even though I give away a lot of free content on newsletter publishing, podcasting, Amazon Fire TV and news sites, that's not, I'm not giving that away. 
I don't have to talk about that. So to get me live with the course, that's inside the course. You can get my podcast information. You can get the newsletter information. But how to put all this stuff together and make it work is inside the course, right? Because there's a method to my madness. And I share my method to my madness inside of my course. And I share how I, how I do all these things. People say it all the time, Audrey, how do you do all of that stuff, right? You run this whole media company, and then you run a freaking chamber of commerce for women. When I tell y'all it's a method to the madness, it's a method to the madness. So if you're thinking about newsletter, thinking about starting a newsletter to promote your your, th- your, your product, just think about what it's going to be, all right? I'm going to go to a song. I'll be right back at, after this song, and we're going to talk more about some of the steps you need to take. Hey, this is one of my new songs. This is a good song, y'all. All my songs are good. I, like, I was bumping to this one like a couple times yesterday. Check it out, Rise Above. Welcome back. One of my new favorites. One of my new favorites. Rise above. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. You know, I tell y'all all all the time. I found out yesterday that I can go and sell my music on Bandcamp. I'm so excited about that. Because I have a lot. I've created 60, I think 68 songs. Yeah. I've created, I think, 68 songs. And I was like, what am I going to do with all this music? So I just found out that I can put my music on something called Bandcamp. So I'm gonna go over there and listen on. I got. I'm gonna. I'm gonna create albums. So I'm gonna pick out 20 songs from my first album. <laughs> Check me out. 20 songs from my first album, and then I'm gonna put out 20 songs from my second album, and tw- I'm, I'm gonna put out an album every month, pretty much because I'm creating 30, 20. I'm creating 20 songs a month, so I can put out an album every single month. Oh my god, isn't that crazy? I don't even know how that's gonna work. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it anyway. 
I'm having a good time doing that. So that's exciting. Um, now let's talk about this product that you're going to sell. If you're going to sell a product, right? A digital product. I'm thinking about, um, eBooks and things like that. And I've sold eBooks before I've sold journals before. Um, it's so many things you can do. And somebody's probably listening right now saying, well, I don't know how to create an ebook. I don't know how to create a journal. I don't know how to go get Canva, go over to Canva. Canva is your friend. Go to Canva and create a journal. Journals are the simplest thing to create. Even if you want to create a puzzle book, you can create a, a coloring book for the kids. You know, it's so many things you can create in the, in the, in the digital space. Even this show right now, right? If I decided I want to take this show, just this episode right here and package it up as an audio class, that's a, that's a digital product. Matter of fact, I might do that now that, now that I said it out loud. Not this class, not this one, but I may do some audio classes and sell them jokers. So remember back in the day when you would buy these programs, all these learning programs on these discs and the audio. Listen, I had so Tony Robbins used to get all my money, me and my husband. We used to buy so many Tony Robbins audios and stuff, and we would listen to them in the car. When we would take trips, we would listen to them in the car. We had unlimited power, something, whatever Tony put out, we had. We had like all these cassette cassette folders with all these, I mean, CD folders with all these CDs in them. But I needed those. I needed those, right? Because I wanted to listen in my car, and that was before podcasting came along and serious and all that stuff. I'm really dating myself. We didn't have all of that. And if we had it, no, nobody had it in their car. So I would put in Tony's CDs and listen to him be empowered and motivated. Like, I wonder why I stopped doing that kind of stuff. I should do that some more. Anyway, that's how, that's how you know, he made so much money. He's a billionaire. Now, you could think about something that you could actually sit down and do like I'm doing right now and talk about that and package that up as a digital audio class and then put it on like a gumroad.com. Go to gumroad. Set up a Gumroad account. It's free. Once you once you make a sale, Gumroad take a cut of that, but they they deliver your digital product to your customer. You can do audio classes. If you don't like, you know, sitting in front of a computer, do a whole series of audio classes and sell them. The other thing you can do too is do a whole series of audio audio classes and put them on something like a Spreaker and, and make them private and only people with a certain code can get access to them. So think about the product you want to sell. Now, ebooks. You could put out an ebook in a New York minute with things like Chat GPT and Gemini and Claude. Like, come up with something. You can speak into your phone. Like, if I decided right now I want to take this episode, right? I can take the audio from this episode, drop it in something like a descript, have it transcribe the entire episode and turn it into like an ebook. Take it and say, okay, transcribe this. It's gonna transcribe everything I say. I'll take the transcription from that. Drop it in chat GPT. Say, I want you to turn this into an ebook about how to leverage newsletters to market your digital product. I got an ebook, right? You know how many, now that I'm thinking about that, let me go back for a second. You know how many episodes I've done? 1,100 episodes. And out of that 1,100, I'm sure about 200 of those are me talking about something on Talk Business Tuesday. I'm sure. Probably even more. Probably, yeah, probably at least 200. But I could take that, have it transcribed, and take it, drop my voice, my saying into chat GPT. Hey, take my voice, you know, add in some humor, add in a little the way I speak inside of this, and turn it into an ebook. This this whole thing I'm doing right now could be an ebook. It's an article, but I can easily turn this into an ebook. Easily. So you don't have to somebody asked me, and this was funny. I was talking about look. When I think about AI, it is letting me be the creative person I always wanted to be. Like, I, if, you, if you've listened to this show for any amount of time, you know that I want to be creative. I wanted to be a creative person. I, I've tried to learn. My, t- my cousin taught me how to sew. I didn't like that. My husband has bought me pottery wheels. I fell sculpting in college. Um, he has bought me canvases to paint on. I, had t- I have a T-shirt press, a mug press, a hat press. I have a, I have a, 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 a printer for printing license plates. Listen, I want to be creative, but I I don't for real. Like part of me said, oh, it'd be nice to be an artist. Yeah, I really don't. Because if I really did, I'll be I'll be doing. I I have enough stuff to be creative. However, when it comes to doing what I'm doing right now, I'm creative. Now, with the, with the advance of of AI. It can take me, my voice, what I'm saying right now, 
it could take that, I could take that and say, turn this into a song. I want you to take this episode of my podcast and turn it into a song. Let me tell you what I did yesterday. So when I, and I know I'm totally all over the place today, but I want you to get an idea of what I'm saying. So in my newsletter every morning, I put in a new song. AI creates a song for me. It's all AI. I use AI to write the song. I use AI to produce the song. And yesterday, yesterday, I use AI to, pr- to produce the video for the song. So when you think about stuff like that, you can do anything and sell it digitally. So what I did yesterday was I wrote the song. I said, AI, write me a song about this, this, and this, right? It did. I wanted to sound like this. It needs to be R and B soul type of song, which is what you just heard. Rise above. That was the song. And it did. It did the song. Right. And then soon, as a matter of fact, I did everything in Suno yesterday. I didn't even have chat GPT write my song yesterday. I did everything in Suno. I did, I went to Gemini. I said, Gemini, I want an inspirational song. I want people to be able to dance to it. It needs to have R and B. It needs to be soul, blah, blah, blah. Write me the prompt for that. So, Gemini, which is Google's AI, Gemini wrote the prompt for that. I took the prompt. I went to Suno AI. I dropped the prompt in Suno AI and say, create this song. Suno created the song, right? Suno created the song. And that's, that's the song that came out, Rise Above, which I absolutely love. I took the words from the song from Suno and I went to in video and I put the, put the words from the song inside in video. And I said, then video, make me a video. Now, what I did wrong over there, I should have said, make me a three minute and 13 second video. I just said, make a video. So the video was too short. So I had to go back and do a little bit of editing, which was easy. So in video, took the words from the song and made a video based on the words in the song. I then took that video. I dropped it into um, Microsoft Clip Chip. A chip clip. That's something new I just found out. About. I dropped it in there. I dropped the, the song in the video. I put the video in there and I muted the video and I played the song. So the words on the video, the words on the song matched up with the video because I dropped the video inside it. I dropped the, this lyrics inside of in video. Now, do you see what I'm saying, y'all? I need y'all to hear what I'm understand what I'm saying. So you got great tools out there. Even if you have a coaching business and you don't have a product, create a product. It is so simple. I did, And that took me about, I said it took me 45 minutes to do the newsletter. Probably didn't even take me that long yesterday. But what took me the long, well, it did because I kept messing up the video. And that was my fault. I won't do that today. I guarantee it won't take me 45 minutes a day. Um, use these tools to help you grow your business. You got newsletter platforms like Beehive, right, that I love. I do that newsletter and guess what? Because the template is there, all I have to do is duplicate the newsletter from yesterday. The one that came out today, I'll duplicate it later on today, right? Change out all the wordings, put in a new song and keep it moving. You ain't even got to start from scratch. Just duplicate, edit the, edit that duplicated version, keep it moving. The tools are there. You just have to understand how to use them. And hopefully this is helping somebody. Now, if you need a lot more help than this, Go to Main Street, Main Street Media Academy dot biz, Main Street Media Academy dot biz, Main Street Media Academy dot biz to sign up for my course. Because in that course, I'm going to break down way more than I'm talking about today. But I just wanted somebody to understand that create you a digital product, create your, you should have a newsletter anyway. If you have clients, I don't care if you ain't got but 30 clients, put them inside the newsletter so they and, and, and talk to them every week at least. So they'll know that you're thinking about them. If they bought something from you before, they will buy some. I have the same customers buy stuff from me over and over again. I need a thousand of them. I need to do, I need to get that to 1000 because they, I always, they, they always come to me with a problem that I can solve for them. And because I can solve it, they pay me. I love, I love that. Right. I need 1000 true fans, 1000 true customers, just like them. That would change everybody's life, right? So, but the way to do that is to start with a newsletter, talk to them, show them some love, right? Put your product in there, your little digital product, and it could be something like a $7 product. It could be a 49 like the product, the digital product I'm about to create right now, 
um, it's going to be $49. Why? Because it's talking about, so my, my new product that I'm coming out with, it's an ebook. It may be an e-course. I don't know. It's not going to be me live. But it's going to be a course on newsletters and podcasting together in one thing, right? It's a $49 product. If you want me in person live, October the 7th, that's how you get me. You, you sign up for the real course. But this is for the person to say, well, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to pay for no real course. I just want to know the basics. Then you get the $49 course. If you want me, you want to be a part of the newsletter boss community, you know, then you take the big course. And, and you have that option. You can do the exact same thing. You can put out a course. You can put it in your newsletter. You can promote it in your newsletter. And eventually somebody's going to say, you know what, let me, let me buy this course this lady talking about. Let me do it. Because I want to do this. I'm tired. And you just never know. You ne- Right now may not be the time. You may do something for an entire year and nobody pays you any attention. I can tell you right now, I've been podcasting for a long time. I've been doing Good Morning Gwinnett almost six years. Um, and people have, people know me, right? But this year people have really took notice and been calling me and I've been in meetings and people want me to help them launch platforms for their businesses. I'm like, yes, this is wonderful. Now we're about to launch good morning, Georgia. I already know that's going to take me to the next level in my space, which is the space that I live in media, streaming media, digital media. That's where I live at. I'm here every day with you guys. I'm either on this microphone or I'm writing on my on my news site or I'm publishing a newsletter or I'm creating a new song every day, even when I'm sick. So I hope this helped you. It's, I'm going to have a full-blown ar- uh, article on the website in about 15 minutes after I finish the show. And you can go over there and you can read the entire article about how to launch, you know, how to get your digital product launched and how to get it in the newsletter and things like that if you are looking for a newsletter platform i use beehive there's a link in the description for beehive click that link yes i'm an affiliate for beehive because i like them and i talk about them so i only think it's fair that i make a few dollars you know um but i'm also supporting you and i'm telling you what i'm using and i love it and i'm not saying that you're gonna love it but i happen to love beehive um so if you want to start a Beehive newsletter, there's a link in the description. Also, if you want to sign up for my course, there's a link in the description. If you just want to support this show, there's a link in the description. See what I'm saying? So now this is the podcast I'm doing all this promotion on right now. I do the same thing in, in the newsletter, but I don't put as much. There's a Beehive link in there. There's a link to run an ad in the newsletter. That's in the newsletter and a link to the show. In my podcast, in my description... All of that's in there. Now, when I put the song on YouTube, because I do that every day, when I put the song on YouTube, all of that stuff I just said, the, the newsletter, the podcast, the course, the, 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 the community, newsletter boss community, all that's in the description on the YouTube channel of the song. All of that. So, I'm all, I'm listening, I'm doing a lot of things. I just want you to be successful in what you do. And I know it sounds like a lot that I do, and it is. I'm not telling you to do all the things I, I, I do, but what I am telling you, if I had to tell you to pick two things to focus on right now, it would be a newsletter channel and a YouTube channel. Well, let's say three. Newsletter, YouTube, and podcast. That, that's what it would be, right? Because I feel like <clears throat> with those type of things, you're going to own your space. Like people, people around Georgia and, and Gwinnett County, they call me the podcast. They call me podcast boss. Why? Because I've been podcasting so long. I've had so many people on my um, on my podcast. One lady has me on her phone as podcast guru. I don't pretend to be a guru. What I do know is I can tell you how to start and how I screwed up. I can tell you that, right? And for you not to do the same. I'm not a guru in any of that stuff. I, I have I produced 1,100 episodes, over 1,100 episodes just on this podcast alone. I have, um, I've been producing Gwinnett Morning Spark Newsletter uh, for 14 weeks. So you do 14 times five. What is that? 90? What is that? 14 times five? 70. So 70 issues, right? I have 70 issues of that. I have over 800 pages on my website of content. Um, I just launched a newsletter. I just launched my, um, my newsletter launchpad YouTube channel. And I just launched my, um, inspired music channel to put all my songs. I have a good morning Gwinnett channel with over six or 700 
uh, audio video thingies over there, you know? Um, so I, I, all of these things I do, all of these things I talk about, I do them. I'm not telling you to do that. Cause that's a, that's a very rigorous schedule and you don't want to get to the point where you get burned out doing so many things. I don't burn out very easily unless I'm sick. Right. Um, and I manage, I have a schedule. So I have a calendar of all my stuff, newsletter days, this day, Monday through Friday newsletter. I do it around the same time every day, which is around five or six o'clock because you know, that's when I'm kind of, that's the last thing I'm doing. I'm going to shut it down. I'm going to schedule it to go out tomorrow morning at six o'clock, you know, um, Monday through Thursday, good morning, Gwinnett at 10 a.m., which we're going to be changing that soon to probably 830 because I'm going to be doing, um, good morning, Georgia. And so I'll be doing good morning, Georgia at nine o'clock. So now it's, you know what I mean? So now it's starting to, <clears throat> and I may keep it at 10 o'clock. I may just pre-record, even though I might have to start pre-recording anyway, because Spreaker is changing the platform where I can no longer go live in December. So I might as well start pre-recording now and leaving it at 10 o'clock. So I might just do that. But, um, and, and, and I'll probably pre-record like eight o'clock and then it'll go live at 10 o'clock. So it's a new episode coming out every day at 10 o'clock, Monday through Thursday. So that, you know, my schedule is laid out in such a way that I can manage. If you're thinking about starting a newsletter and creating a digital product, the first thing I will tell you to do is decide to create a digital product based around your industry and the work that you do. That's the first thing. Once you do that, create a layout for that. And then go to one of these beautiful AI sites and let them help you create it. You know, you can speak it into your phone, have it transcribed, and then have it extended based on information you may have left out, right? That's that part. Once you get that all laid out, you can put that over it. Go take it to Canva somewhere, turn it into a PDF, go to Gumroad, put it inside of Gumroad as a digital product. That's all set. Now you can go back and say, now let me get my newsletter together. Um, unless you have a team of people... Don't try to put a lot of new, a lot of content in your newsletter because it's going to, it's going to stress you out a little bit. You know, I would say write one beautiful newsletter article about whatever it is and call it a day. Now, if you got a team of writers, cause I've seen some really great newsletters, but they all have teams of writers. I've tried to do a whole lot of writing in a newsletter by myself. It's hard. Even with my, and I did it, but it would take me two and a half hours and I'd be stressed out by the time, by the time I'm done, I'm going to go to sleep. We're launching a new newsletter and we have, again, I had so many pieces to it. And then my newsletter partner said, okay, so <laughs> I thought this was supposed to be simple. And I was like, yeah, you're right. So we, now we're looking at making sure that we build this into a brand based on our mission and vision statement. And we don't have so much content that, that really doesn't matter based on the mission and vision. So learning from what I've done so far, you know, and moving forward. These are some things I'm telling you that you should think about doing if you're thinking about doing a newsletter. I hope I didn't sound like I was all over the place, but I get so excited about this stuff. And, you know, for real, content is king or queen, and you should be putting out content out there about what you do. Um, when I was doing the Gwinnett Morning Spark and I was looking for profiles of success around Gwinnett County, we have 33,000 businesses in Gwinnett County, probably more. Those are the ones that are actually registered. When I tell you it was like pulling teeth trying to find people's stories, I'm like, oh my God, I can't even understand. Like, are you not putting out content about who you are, what you do? They're not. They're not. You know? And so if someone wanted to come and do a story on you, they can't even find anything about you because there's nothing out there about you except for your your, your LinkedIn page. Not just LinkedIn page. Yeah, LinkedIn. You know, your social media pages, which really don't tell a story. Like you, you should have an about page that's ranked inside of something. If you Google my name, Audrey Bell Kearney, you're going to find a whole lot. Someone, and, and I'm going to say this and then I'm going to close it. I did, I, I was at a, an event one time I was vending and, and this was way before I put out as much content as I put out now. Um, but I was putting out a lot cause I had a podcast back then. And I think this was probably around 2000 and it might've been 2014 or 15. This girl had this event over at the Hilton and I had a table and I had written this book and I was over there and I had my book stacked up and this woman came by the table. I was selling books, but this one woman came by the table and she picked the book up and she, t now she didn't say hello or anything. She just walked up to it and I was like, hi, she said, hi. She said it like that. Hi. And I was like, Ooh, right. Stank. Like she being stank. Right. That's what I said to myself. So she picked my book up and she looked at the cover and then she turned it over and she looked at the back. Right. So I'm looking at her, looking at the book and then she turned it back up and then she laid it back down and she walked away. And I was like, Oh, right. 
the uh, the nerve. She came back about an hour later. This is what she said to me. She picked the book up again. She said, hey. I was like, hey. She said, girl, I Googled you. Oh, child, sign my book. And I, I was like, wow. She went in the hallway and she Googled me. And she came back and she bought the book because she Googled me. And I was like, I had never heard anybody say that before. But here's the thing. People will Google you and see who you are. They can't see anything if you don't have anything out there. Google me. It's a whole lot of stuff out there. A whole lot of information about me out there. Because I have so much content floating around. So if anybody decided they had, they saw me somewhere and they wanted to write a story about me, hell, I got 1,100 episodes of podcasting that I talk about my life and everything on in the midst of talking about news and business. They can just go scroll. They can just go take them, take an episode, drop it in some AI, and say, hey, pull out everything about Wadri out of this episode. And that, now they got a whole story. So, you know, I said all that to say, put content out about yourself because people may be looking for you and they can't find you because you don't have anything out there. They're not going to the social media looking for your name. And they may, and then they get there and they don't see anything worth anything. So put content out. All right? All right. All right, I'm going to go to my last song, then I'm going to come back and give you my words of inspiration for the day. So stay tuned, I'll be right back. The fire in my soul, a dream I can't ignore. Gonna step out in this world to be something more. No more standing still, it's time to take a leap. Gotta chase my destiny, it's mine to keep. Gonna break the mold. Gonna shine so bright Gonna stand tall Gonna reach new heights Can't let fear and doubt hold me down no more Gotta spread my wings, gotta soar Every step I take Closer to my dream Gonna ride this way Gonna follow the streams Through the ups and the downs Gonna stay strong Won't let negativity distract me for long Gonna break the mold Gonna shine so bright Gonna stand tall, gonna reach new heights Yeah, let fear and doubt hold me down no more Gotta spread my wings, gotta soar Every step I take, closer to my dream Gonna ride this way, gonna follow the streams Through the ups and the downs, gonna stay strong Distract me for long Craving something that I can't define A restless hunger deep inside Lost in shadows of my own mind Begging for release I'm trapped in time Tangled thoughts, twisted desires Shine 
so bright Gonna stand tall, gonna reach new heights Can't let fear and doubt hold me down no more Gotta spread my wings, gotta soar That's one of my other favorite songs. Ow! Let me tell you something. I love, ah, I'm loving it. I'm loving it, y'all. I'm loving it. I love, I love really good songs that make you just like want to dance and makes you feel good. And that's what, that was one of my first favorites. Rise Above is, I got a lot of favorites, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this. I can't wait to sit down today and, and put them on, put my album to, <laughs> put my album together. I'm having so much fun. That's the other thing. Have fun with what you're doing. Whatever it is. I'm I'm a very serious person when it comes to my business. I'm having so much fun right now being serious. It ain't even funny. And I'm just, I'm, I'm over here smiling. Like you can't see me, thank God, because my hair not done. But I'm over here smiling right now because I really am having so much fun doing the podcast, you know, doing the newsletter, creating these songs and sharing information with you guys. So anyway. All right, I got to go, but before I go, I want to give you my words of inspiration. Here it goes, and this is a good one. It is in your moments of decision that your destiny is shaped. Let me say it again because somebody missed it. It is in your moments of decisions that your destiny is shaped. Tony Robbins said that, and he was absolutely right. Here's the thing. When you are indecisive about what it is you're trying to do, there is no destiny for that because there's no path to take. Once you make up your mind that this is the path that I am on, your destiny starts to take shape from that. You may not even see it, but it's taking shape. Know why? Because you have made a decision that this is what it is. I have made a strong decision that, and I've, and this is this has been my decision for a while, for the last six years, that my goal is to build a media empire. Am I doing that? Yes. How do you know? Because I do a podcast every day. I post on a news site three or four times a week. I do a newsletter every day. I'm launching a new news show, a podcast, video podcast that I will be doing every day, five days a week. I'm launching a new newsletter that's going to be weekly. I'm doing the thing that I say I want to do, which is build a multi-million dollar media empire. I'm doing that thing. I'm doing it. I'm doing it right now. So my destiny has taken shape. Now I'm just waiting for the millions. I'm just waiting on the millions, baby. They're coming. They are coming. I know they're coming. You know why? Because I'm chasing my destiny. That's all I got for you today. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you spent the last 47 minutes with me. And I love and appreciate you for that. If you miss any episodes of this show, be sure to go to goodmorninggwinnett.com to listen to past episodes there. And also, be sure to connect with me on all social media at Good Morning Gwinnett. Uh, so subscribe to the Gwinnett Morning Spark newsletter, GwinnettMorningSpark.com. If you want to build a media empire, listen, I'm sharing my wisdom over in my course. Go on over to MainStreetMediaAcademy.biz, MainStreetMediaAcademy.biz, MainStreetMediaAcademy.biz. Hey, listen, thank you again for listening. I'll be back again tomorrow at 10 a.m. God willing, you guys stay safe out there. And until next time, my friends, until next time, make it a great day. Bye, y'all. You've been listening to Good Morning Gwinnett. Make sure to tune in Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time to find out what's happening around Gwinnett. If you like this episode, subscribe now and share with your friends. To learn more about Noise Media Network, visit noisemedia.us.